Should we have a look at some real wedges then, Matt? Some free. Justin Thomas, craftsmanship, come back. Coach at the wheel. Yeah. How are you feeling after your mega day yesterday? Yeah, all good. Woke up pretty early, so I've obviously had enough sleep. Ready Woke for up some pretty golf early today, and a you know. little bit aroused. <laughs> <laughs> Hitch of Tiger on his phone, still on. He was projecting one onto the ceiling last night. <laughs> <laughs> you two are in the Tiger room. How did it go last yeah, night, yeah. gentlemen? All good, yeah. Hot <laughs> steamy. Right, day two of the Masters trip. Um, and there's a bit of rain around. We're actually playing today at the River Club, which is like 50 minutes from Augusta National. It's a lovely course. Me and Ray have actually played it without a camera once, didn't we, Ray? Yeah. It's blooming lovely. Um, and I'm going to try and show you around Justin Thomas's golf bag today. That's going to be fun because I'm going on the tightest tour truck to meet some of the gang this morning. Um, and we're going to talk throughout the day about Justin Thomas and his bag. What's in his bag? What do you reckon's in his bag, Matt? Any ideas? Golf clubs. Mm. Balls. Number one golf clubs on tour, bruh. Your golf travel, yep! Yeah. Hospitality! Show me some hospitality. Right, tight this tour truck. So what's interesting with the tour trucks here at Augusta look, is Augusta's actually over here, and there's a road, they're not on site, which is often just a little bit, it just feels so weird. So when you drive along here, you'll see that they come to caddy with a putter, uh, well, one of his players' putters. Here's another guy with obviously a tailor made club in that down there, so. Not sure why he's doing that. But they've got to walk across this road to get to the truck. So we're going to go in the tightest truck and let's see what JT has in the bag. Right, JJ. Justin Thomas. JT. Does he call you JJ? He does. And do you call him JT? I call him Mr. Thomas. <laughs> um, driver. What driver does he have? So Justin is playing our 917 D2 okay. in a 9.5 loft. 9.5 D2. Now, what, if we move on to the shaft and head then, what shaft has he got going in there? And then what head settings has he got as well? As in, is he playing with Surefit CG and then obviously Hosel settings as well? So Justin plays the Diamana BF60. Okay. Um, one of the unique things about Justin is when he first came on tour, he actually played a stiff flex in his driver. Yeah. Um, so he tends to like shafts that have a little bit more load, a little bit more play. Okay. Um, so where a lot of players out here use very stiff parts, tipped a lot, Justin has zero inches tipping on his driver. He likes to feel some of the load and play because he's always been used to a little bit softer shaft. Okay, that's interesting. So how much would he know what, if I was to go and film with him now, would he tell me what shaft he has? Or will he have to look at it? He'd say a blue one. Yeah, but he would know what he wants it to feel like. 100%. Uh, if you gave him something stiffer, it'll work very well on Trackman for him. We'll get great numbers. Yeah. And then after nine holes, he'll tell me he missed every fairway and it didn't feel very well. That's interesting, isn't it? So really tuned into what he's feeling, doesn't really care about the science of it. It's it's a combination. So what we're looking for are very good Trackman numbers yeah. and amazing on-course performance. So when we fit a player, it's always two parts driving range and then let's go play golf absolutely and what length of shaft has he got any kind of difference in length he plays 45 inches which is a standard title yeah, length yeah, yeah. so nothing long anything like that okay um so from that standpoint the and then head in the sure fit neck and the the sure fit at the back here yep so cg what's he got going on there cg weight he's he's neutral okay um justin again not somebody, that, he's somebody that hits the ball both ways on the golf course. Yeah, we saw him hitting little fades out on the course yesterday. It looked like he, that one, that was his go-to shot, it felt like to me with the driver. I'm not sure if that's right. Yeah, his go-to fairway finder is going to be to tee it lower and yeah. play a little left to right yeah, shot. Yeah, which we saw yesterday up 11 and 17, we saw him hit that shot. And then on other holes for max distance, he's going to go increased attack and go right to left draw, bring the spin down, Yeah, we saw 13, he hit a high bomb draw i mean we would have been at nine iron in the footing yesterday 100 percent. It, so. it made me a little sick to be honest <laughs> he, his ability to work shots for, at his club head speed is pretty impressive yeah so that's for him um where we're using a neutral cg because he needs to go both directions okay. other players that we're trying to eliminate a side of the golf course 
or there are misses on a certain spot on the face, yeah, yeah, will yeah. go a fade or a draw. So he's neutral CG, next setting? Uh, D1. So What does that do to his loft? Uh, reduces his loft slightly and maintains yeah. his lie. Excellent. So, um, so he's a 9.5 head? 9.5 head. Um, and I'm, I actually apologize, we did move the week of Honda to uh, B1, which is flat. Okay. Sorry about that. That's alright. Um, That's alright. So, so how often would he tinker with that? Um, not often. The week of Honda was a, a good one for him because he was home. Yeah. Um, so the big thing for him was with how up he on it, he used to play a 7.5 driver of ours. Majority of his career, 8.5, and then in the 917, uh, with some of the spin reductions, he moved to a 9.5 head. So do you know what his angle of attack is? Um, it's reduced slightly um, in the last few years. He used to be plus 4, plus 5, yeah, and it I, can be when needed, yeah. uh, which I'm sure, sure you saw on 13. Yeah. Um, but it's more up 1, up 2 on a standard drive these days. So he's using T height, to because we saw him teeing it quite low yesterday. 100%. Matt, who was with me, was like, look how low he's teeing that, and he was hitting that little Cut. So that's when his attack will go down yeah. to negative one to zero. Yeah. Um, his standard again one to two up, and then he has the plus four when needed. Um, so in the B1 setting, he's a little flat. It helped remove a little bit uh, of the toe strike for him, right. which will be a, some of his miss. Okay. Um, and then again, as his attack angle has gone down, he's a little more level, a little more accurate. Um, we've had to move from an 8.5 to an 8.5 open to a 9.5 in standard to keep the spin up. Fantastic. And anything with grip. So he's not over thick or thin or what's he got going uh, on with grip, This is another it? change he made about a year and a half ago is yeah. sometimes when the temperature changes it feel like his hands swell a little bit. Okay. So he actually reduced the size of his grip. Oh did he? So he plays a quarter grip um, but he went down a size. He used to play uh, a 58 round. He went to a 60. Um, it just if there's any swelling and temperature changes it just fits his hands better. that phone on the loose side. <laughs> right, Justin Thomas's driver, it's interesting how he's playing a little bit with, well he has no ideas of shafts but he totally understands how they feel. Cool. Which I thought was quite interesting. Yeah. Let's have a look at his irons. We're out at the River Club, it's a lot of fun. Greens are pretty tricksy. So Justin Thomas's irons, what we got going on in the irons? What's he playing? So AJ? Justin plays our 718 MBs. 718 uh, MB. So the one difference is the top end of uh, his set is he actually plays our 718 AP2 and a four iron. Uh, so he's got a four iron in AP2. Interesting. So he's using that built on launch data that he's trying to get with that long iron because I'm presuming, well, we'll talk about the hybrids in a second. So what, um, what's lies and lengths and things like that with the irons? Lengths very standard, lies are slightly upright, um, lofts are very traditional to our, our standard spec. Okay, um, and then what's the story with the four iron? How did he end up there? So Justin was, again, a traditional blade player, likes to work the ball, control flights, but was having some issues on the top end of his bag, controlling long shots in the greens at places like Augusta. Um, so he had switched to our CB product. Yeah. Again, as his uh, attack angles have gotten a little more neutral, yeah. um, last year was looking for just a little bit more height and a little help, and that's where the AP2 gave him just that little bit more launch, a little bit uh, more forgiveness at the very top end of his bag. So that's interesting. And the amount of times I get questions saying, when should I get custom fit? Should I get lessons first? Those kind of ideas, which is a different answer. We're not trying to answer. I've answered that question in other videos. But even these players, as they are moving their technique slightly, are then going back to the bag and making sure if they do move an attack angle, which might change a launch up or down, then they're making sure the equipment's working for them throughout. We're very big on team. So Justin's team, his dad, his uh, Matt Killen, us, we're working together yeah. as they're making changes we're ready with changes so they work together. Cool, um, so he's pitching wedge to five iron. Nine iron, he uses a, a Vokey pitching oh, wedge. So you've got more stories with two iron and what iron? Two iron and? So Justin is a player that carries 15 clubs every week. Yeah. And then on. Which is cheating. <laughs> not on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Depending on course setup, course conditions, he'll either play a TMB two iron. Okay. Or a five wood. So five wood's gonna be launching higher than that. 
that's going to go for the lower flight if wins and or if depending if you need to stop it on greens and those kind of open ideas. championship yeah. two irons in play it's a club that he can hit a long distance yeah the tmb gives him the ball speed still gives him forgiveness a little launch yeah but on a week like this where there are some longer shots that need elevation to stop yeah the five woods normally the play on a week like this and then shaft he is dynamic old x100 uh, always been there always been there yeah. since uh his late high school years yeah a feel he knows and we can do more tweaks with the head rather than trying to reinvent the shaft to, yeah. to control things and then grips i presume following the same ideas that to you've got the in the 60 round come on let's have a look at these wedges then wedges then what have we got going on aaron hello aaron how are you nice to see you again you too. always a pleasure to speak with aaron so he's the you're the specialist wedge guy We're working very closely with Vokey, basically yes sir you? have done for years so um what's the story with justin's wedges justin's is an, is an interesting story uh, we'll get into that in a little bit but he's he's playing some old school models and i always like to tell guys if it if it ain't broke don't fix it so cool if you look at some of his stuff it's uh it's a little bit of a blast from the past we've got some sm6 and some sm5 yeah um, and i will tell you that working with him um, he really is such a talented wedge player um, and when he finds something that he's comfortable with he, he typically will stay in those models unless there's an issue or we're, we're having to make some major changes so um, we haven't had to make many changes and uh, we're trying to keep his game as sharp as it always is so loft wise 46 is his pitching wedge i'm yes. assuming 46 52 56 and 60 now when you put him into a loft and line machine look at the numbers in actual actual uh machine mode 47 52.5, 57, 60.5. Now, he got these numbers by working with his coach, Matt Killen. They got on the track, man, did some did some great work and decided, without looking at the lofts on the machines, these are the numbers that best work for me in terms of my carry numbers. So, those are the numbers that they settle on and we stamp those on all of his parts. Fantastic, so he is fitting them in very much into his distances. Right. He's then K-grind in the 60 with a 12, is that? This, this starts as a 12, but for him, we realized uh, in Cromwell, it's about two, three years ago, that there was a better sole form that was based on his technique, the bunkers, and so on. So 12 is a little bit too much. We polished that down to eight, okay. add some heel relief. Right. Um, and that's that's kind of the balance that he's been looking for. Cool, and then in the 56, starts at 14 in an F grind. Yep, and that remains the same. That is the stock grind. In fact, these first three pieces, 46, 52, and 56, those are all standard. Yeah. Um, that's the one thing I think is cool about Justin Thomas is that it doesn't require a lot of complicated things to make a wedge work well for him. Yeah, yeah. And the first three pieces is just stock off the shelf. Um, those soles and, and CGs and everything are, are working out great. It's that 60 where he's doing a short game work that we have to modify some. And then grip and shaft matching basically the iron bag that we've done earlier in there with JJ. Right, so X100 in the 46, and then he goes a little bit softer, a little bit heavier in the uh, 52, 56, 60 using the S400 tour issue. Okay. Now the grips, he used to be a 58 round guy. Yeah. He went a little smaller, so now he's a 60 round tour belt yeah. cord. So, yeah, absolutely. JJ you know, again, just that. kind of finding that balance of what feels right in your hands, and, and the 60 tends to feel a little better for him. So JJ Fairway Woods, nine, he's at F2, 917, 15 degree, is that what we're saying? Yep, this is where he'll use the SureFit CG to go to that D1 setting, remove a little bit of loft, a little bit of spin on the fairway. So is that 0.75 that takes off? Correct. So he's 14.25. Correct. Um, and then he's obviously, he, he started the week, I think you told me earlier, uh, with the two iron and the five wood in the bag because he does his 15 clubs kind of thing and you're pretty confident he's going to end up with the five wood unless conditions change. Correct. So he uses a 915 F18, FD 18 degree fairway wood. Yeah. Uh, two different shafts. Okay. Um, three wood shaft is Tensei Blue 80. Right. Um, so it's a little heavier part than his driver and the Tensei part with the boron tip, a little more stability, matches up really, really well with is 917 fairway wood yeah where the five wood uh, for someone like justin at his speed a little stiffer part uh fujikura tour spec 9.2 heavier weight 
Okay. Um, again, just matching up with a five wood because of the length. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When you say his speed, you, off the top of your head, do you know his clever speed with the driver, what he gets up to? He'll be uh, around 120. Yeah, around 120. And then how far can he crank that up? Have you seen him when he's trying to max out or not really? I've seen him in the low 120s when he really wants to send one. Right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then that gaming shot, that little cut one, he's probably still keeping it up there at the one because he hasn't got a whole back setting much, has he? Not too much. Again, he, he tries to control a lot of that direction with shape. Yeah. Um, so you'll still see him in the 117, 118, even sometimes faster um, yeah. with that shot. That's a, that's a nice finding fairway kind of speed to have isn't it absolutely i mean you know when you get when you got all those speeds it's nice to be able to get around a course like this absolutely that is a spot map that is a spot he's a big one. gator gator spotted you totally spotted him yeah i have saw him from mile off you can have it out with him no you're probably gonna get that shot very close <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is the right actually <laughs> Do you reckon he's part of the army? Definitely. He's massive! Is he? Can I have a look? Yeah. River Club film, that was a lot of fun. Some interesting golf, Matthew. <laughs> As always. <laughs> that was good. That was mental. What was that? I don't know what that was. <laughs> I mean, we are crap, but that was crap. <laughs> no one was that. I wasn't that bad. Like, you even make me all feel crap. Uh. <laughs> Should we head off now? Let's get out of here. Let's <laughs> go back to the master, shall we? Has anyone seen Dan yet? Dan? <laughs> What golf ball is he using? He uses the Pro V1X. Would he be aware, or has he done much demoing obviously with both balls and is, is that your advice giving him that ball or is that something that he's coming through with his feels and what he likes to see a ball do? Combination, so every time we're coming out with new balls we're always exposing our players to that. Uh, the one thing on the X ball is the feel and the spin that it has, yeah. especially around the greens. That's one of the things Justin really likes about it. Okay. And then really good flight for him off the driver. It matches up really well. Has he ever gamed Pro V1 not X? So has he gone that far or has he always been He's an been X, X for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, he, he's dabbled a little bit with the V. He has actually played it a couple weeks. Okay. Um, but again, it's brought his iron play into a little different window than he was used to. Yeah. Um, so he's um, predominantly played uh, the X. And then you've marked it, or he, that's how he's marking his ball at the moment, we're saying. He, that's, has he always done that? Is that something he's had in the bag marked? That's his like traditional marking? This is his traditional marking. You're right there, sir. <laughs> So let's finish on the putter, JJ. What's he got in the bag putter-wise? Scotty Cameron, I'm presuming. So he plays our Scotty Cameron T5W. Okay. Um, so Justin was always a, a traditional blade user yeah. and was looking for a little higher MOI putter, but still something that had some toe flow, okay. and some movement. Yeah. So what Scotty did for him is take one of his higher MOI um, putters and welded a, a short neck on it. Okay. Um, so that short neck allowed there to be some hang and to give Justin the forgiveness and feel and look and alignment help uh, from a bigger putter, but okay. get it to move like a putter he had used. Excellent. So this isn't the color or even quite the neck because this is one you pulled off the truck. This is kind of next generation of it. Okay. So this is the 5.5. Yeah. So what Scotty did was redesign the shaft from the five to which would be a little bit more face balanced where on this neck there's a little bit more hang. Okay. So what he was able to do is use someone like a Justin Thomas as research and development and say what do you like to look at? What do you want to feel? And then how do I make it even better? How do I make it cleaner looking uh, and things like that? Thus the 5.5 that we now currently offer, which is kind of in that inspired by Justin Thomas mold. Fantastic, and how much is he a putter changer tinkerer? Is he, does he tend to keep a model for a long time? He, he tends to keep it for a while. He, again, similar to his other equipment, uh, he knows what he likes to look at and feel. Yeah. Um, so he'll always stop at the studio, get a double check, make sure, maybe come up with something in case. Yeah. But 
more times than not, um, he knows it's him, so he's always trying to get back. When you've had success with a putter like a Jordan Spieth, like a Justin Thomas, you're not really trying to redo it. There you go, that's what's in Justin Thomas's bag. Right, see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're all playing around Columbia, then we take Rory back to Augusta. He stays over for the week until Monday. Me and Matt head on to Alabama where we're playing more golf before leaving on Saturday. See you all tomorrow.